Good evening, everyone. The time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We open up our meeting, uh, each meeting with hearing of visitors, and uh, as soon as I get my glasses out, I'll tell you who tonight's visitor is. Oh, that's right. So Principal Rogan from the Kennedy School is uh, signed up to join us as, uh, for hearing of visitors. So, Mr. Rogan, if you'd like to join us. Mayor Carpenter, Mrs. Smith, members of the school committee, good evening. I want to take just a minute today to come by because I know there's a lot of exciting things that happened in the city today for our opening day. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to say is uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, the commitment that you made to improving the environment uh, at the Kennedy School. Uh, thank you to uh, Mrs. Smith for um, sticking with uh, her commitment to making our modular wing a better wing for the children. Thank you to uh, Deputy Thomas and uh, Deputy Barry for listening to me and listening to my whining and sticking with me so that we were able to get a uh, better environment for our children. Today, we had our uh, third grade children come into a wing that was absolutely positively beautiful. From uh, the redesigned classrooms, uh, to the new furnishings, to the hallway, to the bathroom facilities, everything was sparkling to make a new day uh, very special uh, for them and to make a new year uh, very special. We were fortunate enough that Mrs. Smith was able to come and join and she was able to see some of the enthusiasm of the students. Uh, also, I want to compliment the uh, third grade team at the Kennedy School who did a fantastic uh, job of removing everything from their classrooms and getting them set up uh, again. Uh, the tradesmen uh, for the Broughton Public Schools, I can't say uh, enough. At this point, they're uh, extended members of the uh, Kennedy family. They were uh, very happy as July rolled around when uh, I wasn't down checking on them three or four times a day, and then in August coming back, uh, seeing uh, all of the progress. Uh, but they made a commitment to having everything uh, beautiful for uh, the kids and everything that they did. How would this work out for the kids? How would this work out for the teachers? So having our tradesmen uh, put their uh, effort into the project was wonderful. And certainly at uh, a time later when the whole project is finished, I'd like to uh, recognize them as well and I'll work that out with Mrs. Smith and uh, Deputy uh, Superintendent Thomas as well because uh, their heart and soul uh, certainly was in it. Uh, when the project uh, is finished. They're doing the outside work and the roofing and things like that. I know Mrs. Smith is going to have a time to have you come and to be able to visit and see it as well. And it's something that uh, as Brockton Public Schools and the Kennedy School, it's something that we can be very, very proud of. Uh, so as I mentioned, I just wanted to take a minute to uh, say thank you and uh, to Mrs. Joyce. When I just spoke to her at the beginning uh, before we started when Mrs. Joyce in the spring said, what about the Kennedy School? we had the answer and uh, it looks absolutely wonderful so thank you uh, all once again for your commitment and uh, we look forward to the time when we have you over so that you'll be able to uh, join in what a nice uh, job that was done so thank you very much Mr. Rogan and that is the only uh, visitor that we have signed up so we will move on to the <coughs> to the consent agenda our consent agenda is the manner in which the school committee uh, handles routine pieces of business. Um, any school committee member may request that an individual item from the consent agenda be removed for individual discussion and consideration. So at this time I'll ask the members of the committee if there are any requests to remove items from the consent agenda. No takers? Okay. Then in that case. The consent agenda as it stands. Second. Okay, motion has been made and properly seconded. Uh, all in favor? Approved unanimously. The consent agenda is adopted. 
And so we'll get to the uh, report of the superintendent of schools and it's an exciting day for everyone because there's only one first day of school each year and uh, we look forward to hearing uh, from you superintendent and some of the other department heads in terms of uh, how the first day went today. Well certainly start by uh, giving you an update of uh, the district and some of the numbers, some of the concerns, um, and also uh, Deputy Superintendents Thomas and Barry will share with you uh, individual things that happened at our high school, our elementary school, our middle school, our alternative schools, or multiple pathways, so you'll hear how the day went. I also would like to give you an update. Um, I did have 1,400 teachers return yesterday, um, so well, let, let me just quickly start with that. And I'd like to first of all uh, thank Vice Chair Tom Minicello. Um, our mayor was busy and Mr. Minicello stepped in and welcomed our teachers and, and I thank him for taking the time to do that. It was exciting to see 67 new teachers for opening day yesterday with the teachers. Um, we shared with them a PowerPoint that included successes in the district last year, honors and accolades. We gave them a budget update. We talked about our plans for FY15. In other words, when I talk about the budget, we talked about some of the things that we are pursuing. We talked about the letter to the commissioner, to the response, our legislative group, our facilities tour that we will continue to do early in the fall. So all of those things were shared with our teachers. We talked about choosing park as a district. We talked about our ed evaluation and our 100% uh, rating submitted to the DESE in a timely manner. We talked about, uh, we unveiled uh, the beginning of our strategic plan and our new logo and I will have for each of you in your packet and this was donated by many people in the community. When I say people, I'm talking about Bridgewater State University, uh, Genmark, Massasoit, Stonehill, Bernardi, Chartwells and Mark Petty, uh, attorney at law. So as you can see, it has our instructional excellence for every student every day, the Brockton Public Schools, and our funders are on the back. So each of our teachers uh, received this. I'm told we're actually some wearing them for the first day of school. So this will be something as we go forward that we continue to share with our parents, um, you know, our strategic plan. Um, I also talked to them again about not just the strategic plan, what the implementation will look like this year. We're going to be defining our initiatives setting up project managers with team, with team members, target start dates, and we will have continual updates to the school committee, as I mentioned in August, uh, about this document. So I will tell you yesterday, looking at the teachers, with all of the things that I thought were challenges for them, they were excited to be there. I felt like they were a strong, unified group going forward. I knew they would get right into the classroom and set the right tone for today, and I wasn't one bit disappointed when I was in the schools. It is amazing, and in the first school I went to, so you just heard Mr. Rogan talk about the Kennedy. I wasn't allowed to go there until today. So when I finally got to actually go in and, first of all, the Kennedy School itself looked wonderful. And you are talking an almost 50-year-old school. So to walk in and see what the custodial staff had done, you know, the building was shining. The grounds look wonderful, but to go down and to see the update and the rehab of those modular classrooms, I can't wait for you to see it. The pride in the students' faces, and I want to thank here, it's interesting when you look at students in the first day, I want to thank the parents. The children, you know, were dressed beautifully. They had their new little backpacks, and, and we, we took a picture, and hopefully you see it up here, of everybody's sneakers. They couldn't wait to get their, their sneakers in the picture, all the different colors, and, and all the excitement of a new beginning and in the schools that I went to and you'll hear from our two deputies you could feel that excitement more importantly the kids were working they were already setting guidelines for classroom rules they were already into projects you know talking about what a good student is we talked about goals so in each of those classrooms you know I had the opportunity to have dialogue um, I visited also the Raymond school again I have to tell you when I walked in it was shining it was a school where you go into that cafeteria and the tiles match the painting and you feel like you're in a good place with all of the challenges at some of our schools that previously had no walls and we still have some of those classrooms that are open classrooms. But it felt good to be there. Now Mayor, you told me the opening of school is always very positive. Well I do have to share with you, 
when I was leaving in the nurse's room, and I am telling you, eight little children, I think they were first graders. Unfortunately, when you leave a, a school area, nobody around for the summer. Bees' nest had formed in the little playground, and I'm talking underground. So we had eight little students with, with a, you know, little bee stings. We took care of it, and we moved on, and I believe that uh, our pest control was called in to make sure that we took care of the situation. So if, the, if, the, if there was any downer, it was seeing these little children all excited about the first day. But again, wonderful to be at the Raymond and the same thing uh, at our Downey School, which were the schools I was able to visit today. So you would be very pleased at, again, at the level of what was happening in the classroom. The children were engaged, you know, people were, were at work and uh, ready to start with the first day. So I was very, very pleased. I will give you some news about our enrollment. Our first day enrollment was 15,571. And last year, that number was 15,134. So we are already looking at, on this day, an increase of 437 students. When we're, when we're looking at our October 1st report of last year, we are estimating at this time, and it's very difficult to do that, truly the lines were out the door today, and I mean up the walkway if any of you drove by Maple Ave and could see what was happening at our Parent Information Center. And, and at this point, we have put aside the kindergarten registrations so we can get uh, first grade through 12th grade up and going, but we are estimating over 500 new youngsters again and I will remind you that this is our third year in a row with numbers like that um, you know children keep keep coming and when we're estimating 1600 for kindergarten I'm not sure when the last time was we saw numbers like that I think about a year ago we had just over 1500 a class a year ago so so this is looking to top that class with kindergarten students um, and overall at this point in Brockton our parent uh, uh, information Center has registered 770 new students. Now that's not taking into account those students that might have left the district at this point, which will be that October 1st report. But they've registered 770 students. I want to give them a shout out again today for the hard work that has been going on. We've had additional assistance down in that office and, and continue to, to monitor what's happening. I will tell you in the primary grades, and I was counting heads today, I was talking to the teachers, we're trying to limit that enrollment at 24 and 25. I can't tell you that's a number that I'm pleased with, but it was a number that was a reality for us. As far as enrollment in other grades, we have frozen enrollment in grades two um, at the George and the Raymond schools at this point. In grade three at the Hancock, Brookfield, and Downey schools. In grade four, at the Brookfield and Kennedy schools and grade 5 at the Hancock, George and Raymond where we currently have 28 to 29 students in those classes. So I, I will assure you this month before we get to an October 1st report because I want to do it sooner than later, we are looking to, to see if there are large class sizes depending on what areas there is a possibility of having to look at hiring an additional staff or two or whatever we're able to afford. We do have a little bit of a reserve. I talked to you about that during the summer months. So we'll take a look and I'll report to you uh, as we go on what those numbers are. I think what uh, is important for us at this time is to also talk about, and we have talked about it as a group, it, it isn't just about our long range plans. We obviously need a short range plan going forward, which we knew was always a reality for us. And I'll address that tonight when we talk about some of our uh, subcommittee meetings that we'd like to, to start uh, earlier than later. So at this point, that's just a quick uh, overview, but I would like to invite uh, our two deputy superintendents to, to give you uh, more in-depth of what was happening at the different levels. I'm actually going to do the report for all levels, so I'm going to be talking a lot. I apologize in advance. Um, 
I had the opportunity to visit six schools today, um, and the schools that I missed were visited by Superintendent Smith or the curriculum coordinators in the Office of Learning and Teaching. By all accounts, it really could have been the third week of school. Schools were clean, hallways were orderly, and classrooms were busy with activities that were engaging students throughout the day. Um, teachers were already calling students by name, which is very impressive, um, as early as 9 o'clock. Um, enlisting students in their um, establishing classroom rules, routines, and expectations, um, which is a great way to set the tone for another successful year. I visited the Davis School, and I had the opportunity to um, come in on a meeting where Bridgewater State University was getting their student teachers ready. Um, their student teachers will actually be starting the school year um, with, with the teachers and their students, so they're going to get a true idea of what it's like to begin the school year, all of those routines and expectations, um, lots of repetition. A couple of them were early childhood, but there were 10 of them all together, and I thought what a great opportunity for them to actually see the way a school year starts um, so that they can really understand you know, how, how a classroom climate is created. Um, the Bridgewater Davis collaboration, um, it's expanding this year in, in some nice new ways. Um, the college is going to be hosting sixth to eighth graders to prepare them for the college experience and administrators from the Davis as well as Bridgewater, they're going to be um, working to expand arts opportunities for the Davis in collaboration with the university's art and music departments. Um, the thing that started this collaboration, obviously the Huntington and East paved the way for this, um, but it was really really getting more student teachers into the district to um, really get a sense for future teachers within the district. So it was really nice to see that. Um, at the Brookfield School, um, we walked into a first grade class. They were actually reading First Day Jitters, uh, which is a popular book among all levels. Students were graphing how they were feeling on their first day of school, excited, nervous, or sad. Um, and we stuck around so we can report that only a couple of students reported that they were sad today, which is good. Um, at the Arnone School, I had the chance uh, to speak to some kids who participated in the Rise Up summer camp. When I asked them, isn't it great to be back, they said, well, I've been here all summer. So that's how we began talking about the summer camp. But it is a federal grant that um, Arnone received in partnership with the YMCA um, that allowed 50 students in grades K to, two, K to 2 to have a camp experience throughout the summer. The mornings are taught by three Arnone teachers, and it's a literacy-based um, curriculum and then the afternoons the YMCA does a nice summer camp for the kids. What's great about this collaboration is the Arnone is right by the Y um, and part of it is what happens in the summer but then the collaboration that happens with families throughout the year. So that connection was already made um, and the students were very happy and excited to tell me about it. At the Huntington School both laptops and tablets were in use today um, in the primary classrooms which was great to see um, and we also got to see how well the Barrett Russell kindergarten students were integrating into their new schools um, and that was the case across the district because they're entering in grade one um, so it was truly great to see what the teachers and students were doing to support their their new friends from the Barrett Russell in one room at the Huntington over half of the students had gone to the Barrett Russell um, and the students their their grade one friends who were familiar with the Huntington loved walking them around and showing them the ropes at the Huntington school. Um, very few tears there this morning, which is nice. Um, Pre-kindergarten and kindergarten classes begin on Monday, September 15th, and full-day kindergarten classes are located at, at every elementary school and the Barrett Russell School on Oakdale Avenue. Um, Pre-K is centralized at the Gilmore Early Childhood Center, and the kindergarten screenings are scheduled right now to be taking place September 5th, 11th, and 12th. Um, and orientation set sessions will actually be set up by individual schools, and the schools are doing outreach to parents so that they know when those are taking place. Um, now on to the middle schools. Um, South Middle School started the day off very smoothly. Um, very impressed because today was their first day of breakfast in the classroom. It was pretty ambitious to say that they were ready to start with grade one, but it actually went really, really well. Um, the school implemented breakfast in the classroom today with hundreds of students eating a healthy meal. Um, seventh and eighth grade breakfast ambassadors um, collected the breakfast bags and delivered them to homerooms. And South is the first middle school in the state to actually adopt breakfast in the classroom 
classroom. So it's off to a great start. Um, North Middle School students were happy and excited as Mr. Ahern welcomed them at the door this morning in a seersucker suit. I, it, he's actually pictured, he was pictured in the, uh, the slideshow there. Um, a seersucker suit and a smile. You'll see that. Um, <laughs> inside, students had no trouble finding their way. iPads were adeptly, adeptly used um, to direct lost students to their homerooms. And in no time at all, students were in classrooms meeting their new teachers and classmates. And that truly is the case everywhere, although I'm not going to comment on every school. Little to no time is lost on getting students to their destination. Um, it's amazing how quickly learning takes place um, in schools on the first day. There you go. There's the seersucker suit. Okay. The first day of school was very smooth um, for the middle school students at Plouffe Academy. Um, Principal N Michelle Nazarella emphasized planning, preparation, and the personal touch, the three Ps, when starting the new year. Um, even before students got off the bus, they were actually greeted by a staff member who helped direct them to their new classrooms where teachers welcomed them at the door. The first day went very smoothly as well at the Ashfield Middle School. Grade six students were especially excited to be entering middle school and meeting their new teachers. Um, their anticipation was clear as they watched and listened to their math teacher describe what they would be learning throughout the school year. And this, this report actually comes from um, a district math coordinator. So. Brockton High School. I had the great opportunity to visit Brockton High School this morning and walk the hallways with Principal Wolder, um, which is something that she does at the start of every period. Um, of the 1,236 freshmen who began today, we only encountered two of them who actually were um, trying to find their way in the hallways of Brockton High. Um, Principal Wolder made a personal connection with both of those students as she walked them to their classes. And we joked that I, there's no way I could find my way around. Um, so anyway, um, there was also great staff presence in the hallways and corridors to help students navigate the building. I mean, that is a big deal. Two students, that was it. Um, Brockton High School currently has 4,235 students on its active roles, including the freshman class of 2018. There are currently 1,033 sophomores, 996 juniors, and 934 students in the senior class. Today, 3,887 Brockton Brockton High School students reported for school, and that's a 92% attendance rate. This year, in an effort to save on postage and count down, uh, cut down on scheduling issues, Brockton High implemented a new postcard system, um, which uh, allowed students and families to receive a postcard, which really just had nothing more than their homeroom assignment this year. In the past, they received mail packets with their schedules in them, and it wasn't uncommon for the schedules to have to change once students arrived to school. So they received their homeroom assignment. When they got to their homerooms this morning, um, they were actually given given um, an, an up-to-date schedule um, and I think it really helped to alleviate anxiety and it also saved a lot of money on postage and printing and reprinting schedules. Now for the alternative schools, um, Dr. Tarasi can't be here this evening, but he shared his observations and updates related to the schools because he visited all of them this morning. Champion High School opened very smoothly today with Dr. Cobbs addressing all students. Champion began the, began the year with 108 students and approximately 15 new referrals pending. There are 30 new freshman students in the school, including transfers from Brockton High School and the new rising nine students recruited from the middle schools. Students beyond the walk limit are being provided with bat passes and the Champion EI program saw 12 students in attendance out of 20 enrolled. The program staff is working with the transportation company and each student's home was contacted this morning to straighten out any possible problems related to transportation. Student attendance was just over 95 percent there this morning. The Russell Alternative School, which also opened without incident, um, all with all staff in attendance. Student attendance was at 61%, and the homes of all absent students were being called when Dr. Tarasi was there. One student mistakenly showed up at Brockton High, but was redirected without a problem. And bus passes were also provided to the students who were el eligible at the Russell. The Pathways Program at the Keith School also began today, with 25 re-engaged students enrolled. Having graduated 32 re-engaged dropouts last year, 
The Pathways staff will be replenishing its enrollment by contacting students on the dropout list, and that work is in process already. Pathways is also in the process of conducting the AccuPlacer testing to determine student placement and for possible dual enrollment at Massasoit Community College. The Goddard School began the school year with 55 students enrolled in the Therapeutic Day School. Today's students' attendance was at 82%. Several students are currently in hospital placement and will be transitioning back to school as the year progresses. And all teaching and therapeutic support staff were in attendance. Only one student had a transportation problem due to an incorrect address, but that was fixed immediately. So overall, the day went extremely well at all of the schools, thanks to the administrative team the teachers, the paras, the MTAs, administrative assistants, cafeteria <coughs> workers, custodians, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and of course to parents and students and their families. And I just want to add to that when you mentioned the parents, um, also when I was leaving the Downey today, in comes Ollie Spears uh, with, and I'm talking boxes and boxes of supplies for the kids at the Downey School, uh, Mr. Henningsen, and I believe also Jacob Tagger. So I'm not sure the Three Musketeers, the group name, but um, but it was really exciting to see him pulling in uh, those boxes. I'm sure the teachers and the parents are going to be most appreciative. So so thank you for that to, to, again to our parents. Transportation. Yeah, um, I'll talk uh, about the facilities and transportation and food service. Um, Mr. Rogan already mentioned the uh, the modulars. Uh, he actually gave me too much credit. Um, all the credit goes to Ken Thompson, the facilities director, who actually was there every day, and also the craftsmen and the custodians that uh, located at the um, the Kennedy. Um, they should get all the credit for the amazing job that they did over there. So I thank them for that. Um, every year. Um, the city puts aside some capital money uh, and it's in the public property department and at the end of every year if we don't have a disaster with a boiler or something that um, that goes bad uh, we're able to use that money to do some repairs um, last year we used it at the um, South Junior High and East Junior High to do the gyms over uh, this year we use it at North and at West, they're doing the totally doing the gym floors over, resanding, uh, refinishing. The gym floors are complete, and now we're waiting for the new bleachers to be delivered and installed. And those will all be done by October 14th. So that was the um, the mods and and the those two gymnasiums were the two largest uh, projects we did this summer. At the Hancock School, um, we upgraded all their bathrooms with new uh, uh, petitions and stalls. Um, we did some painting. There. As, as well across the whole system, some painting, some carpet um, replacements, and general maintenance work throughout the district. Um, we also did ACs in all the cafeterias of the schools that do not have air conditioning. Um, the goal was to um, at least have a large area in the school with places like East Junior High, West Junior High, North, the, the old buildings that do not have AC, to at least have a, a large area where the uh, principals can bring the students and then go to have lunch or they can take classes in on days like this and, and uh, when we have these hot and humid days so uh, that was completed over the, um, the summer early in the summer so it would be ready when school started again we did a lot of work order repairs we're going to be replacing a lot of carpet up here at Brockton High to get ready for accreditation um, there's about 60 rooms that we we tore the carpet out of and we're going to try to be replacing uh, before October 15th as far as transportation today we had 8,800 students that were on 49 vans and 49 buses um, throughout the district. Um, we also have an additional 36 wheelchair vans that run obviously for special education students um, so that the, the three tiers ran um, smoothly. I want to thank uh, the mayor, the chief of police and Lieutenant Mills for the extra police presence at all the buildings. Um, I went to the Davis and the Downey um, and it's, it's been, there's a lot of traffic. Um, uh, the Baker School as well. Um, there's a lot of traffic, uh, a lot of tra people trying to get to work, and a lot of people drive their, their children on the first day of school, and they don't put them on the bus the first day of school. So there was a lot of automobile traffic, and um, the police presence really did help. And also you have all the buses and vans pulling out of the school. So, you know, again, we ask people driving to schools and walking their children to school to, to be patient because for that half hour to 30, you know, that half
half hour to 40 minutes in the morning and the same in the afternoon. That's, you know, if you're going to be passing by a school at that time, it's, it's going to be a delay. And we ask people to be patient. But uh, the police presence really helped today. And um, so it helped it go a lot better. But it was busy. There's no question about it. The traffic was heavy. Uh, and it was busy. But it did, it did run well. Uh, a food service program, we served 9,200 lunches across the district and also 2,300 breakfasts. So um, it, that went well. Um, again, there were there were some issues uh, here and there with with buses and bus stops that need to be changed. Um, the the chief of police. It's it, it's it's the good thing about it is, is people are looking for safety. Uh, I, I I got a call from the chief of police who was leaving his neighborhood and said, Mike, there's a bus stop here. That I think maybe we should change because it's a busy street. Can you put this bus stop stop on another corner? So we appreciate that kind of feedback and and we we welcome the to, to public. To to, um, to to if they see bus stops that are in bad spots, I mean we try to monitor and try to change things. But as the, from year to year, if there are issues with bus stops or if there's a corner that wasn't busy in the past and is busy now, um, you know we're always willing to change bus stops and routes to obviously make it more uh, you know, more safer for not only the the kids on the bus but the people that are driving on the roads as well. So um, so overall, you know again it was a good opening, um, you know with a normal first day. Um, you know, bus route issues here and there, but overall, it was um, it was a good day, and we were all clear. Uh, first student gave me the all clear call at about 4:45, meaning that all their buses and vans were back in the lot and checked by the bus drivers, and then and cleared out. So, you can take any questions if you have any. Uh, can you talk to us for a minute about school crossing guards? How many did we actually have on duty today? We had 72. And the number at the end of last year? 119. So we were down 47 school crossing guards? That's Correct. That's like the right number? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the police presence. Lieutenant Mills is here. Um, I thought the, the police were a, a big help to us today. Um, Lieutenant Mills and the Chief and I and Lieutenant Crowley and Captain DeBarry met yesterday. The police came up with their strategic plan to between school police and Brockton police to deploy about 20 police officers across the city both during the morning and afternoon commutes. Um, I visited a total of seven schools between this morning and this afternoon. I didn't visit inside the schools, I was visiting outside the schools to see what the uh, student safety looked like, particularly for the walkers. Um, and the police officers were instrumental uh, in many, many instances. Uh, we've got to resolve the low numbers of school crossing guards ASAP. Uh, in my opinion, at least three of the schools I went to did not have a safe number of school crossing guards. And had the police officers not been there, I think it would have been a dangerous situation. Um, and we can't put 20 extra police officers out every day all year. Uh, so I, I did, um, I, I believe that there's a resolution there for us if the ongoing negotiations between the school committee and the custodians union um, could result in an agreement that both sides were satisfied with uh, that would allow us to lower our costs and rehire and restaff additional posts there. So um, I did prior to the meeting make a personal appeal to both Mr. Minicello representing the school committee and to Mr. Talbot representing the union uh, if they would um, resume negotiations on this one item immediately um, and they've both indicated a willingness to do so perhaps as early as tomorrow as late as the beginning of next week depending on attorney schedules availability and all of those things but um, I, I do think at this point it's incumbent upon me as the mayor uh, you know We've had two children hit and killed by cars in the last two weeks in this city. And going 47 school crossing guards light is, is not an acceptable solution. So I understand the budget is limited. I understand there's not as much money in the budget as the superintendent requested. Um, but we need to come up with a solution. I think the solution would lie in finding a reasonable agreement uh, with the union on staffing and costs of school crossing traffic details. So 
I'm hoping, Tom, I appreciate yours, and Mr. Talbot looks like he stepped out, but I'm hoping as early as tomorrow, and if not, within the next few days. They do have a regularly scheduled negotiating schedule, Tom, the 10th? September 10th. September 10th. Um, I just feel like every day that we don't have enough crossing guards out there, we're putting children at risk, and I don't think any of us wants to do that. So um, next Tuesday is an election day. There will be additional traffic going into the schools, additional people that are not customarily driving into those schools. I think that compounds the situation. Um, so for the next couple of days, I believe, Lieutenant Mills, we have the plans in place for the next couple of days to maintain the, the additional police staffing. Um, but that's a temporary solution. It's not a long-term solution. So um, going to hope that perhaps uh, with this urgency of the moment, that we can get folks on both sides to sit down and come up with a uh, solution. And I'm going to do whatever I can as the mayor and as the chair of the school committee to try to facilitate that at this point because I think at the end of the day, I'm responsible for the safety of the kids. Um, so having said that, we'll hope that we can put something together in the next few days and the superintendent work closely together, you and I, with the school committee and with the union to try to um, get to a solution. Thank you, and I also want to uh, say to the mayor and to our, our school staff, um, you know, with, again, the uh, three-year-old boy and our 12-year-old student at the Raymond, I know the outreach to the families was great uh, from your office. Certainly, uh, I talked about it the first day of school to our staff, who continues to support families in the community. I will say the Raymond School today, with uh, John Snellgrove and their team, brought together the classmates uh, of our student at the Raymond, and letters went home to the parents to make sure that we continue to, to provide uh, that support. So it, it is very important. And the only other thing I'll say is when we look at costs and we talk about bringing legislative groups together, I want to remind everybody that in our transportation budget, and it continues to go up, is again an unfunded mandate that increased last year by $330,000 uh, with McKinney Vento and, right. and our, again, our homeless students. And these are those unfunded mandates that that we have very little control over. And I, I think this is our advocacy this year is gonna be really important. And again, that'll be with Congressman Lynch, you know, talking to our legislators, and that's just one piece of it. But again, we'll, we'll continue to work to, uh, to address these concerns. Mr. Minicello and then Patty. Um, I, I appreciate the, uh, the assistance that the mayor provided to the city today. Um, we certainly will, graciously accept any assistance. Um, this budget coming in with respect to the uh, non-net school spending um, has been no surprise to anyone. We um, worked diligently, the school committee and Mrs. Joyce's subcommittee, um, to basically save busing for every student. We were able to accomplish having 900 kids at all three tiers coming and going, not be pedestrians, not be walkers, so that those kids could maintain busing. Uh, we worked very hard at that. Um, there's no one on the school committee that um, is taking this issue lightly, um, and no one has not been working hard. Um, I think the fact that we maintained the busing and didn't cut out any levels or any areas in the city is pretty much a miracle. Um, and we didn't do that alone, we did that with the assistance of the administration. Um, so, you know. We're, you know, we're willing to do the work, and we have been doing the work. Um, you know, uh, today's paper, I was a little bit surprised by the, the paper, but um, I'll let that go. We will continue to do what needs to be done. And, um, you know, if there's anyone on the school committee that should be criticized, I guess it should be me, because I'm the senior member. So there are two other members on that subcommittee with respect to the custodians, uh, and they're freshman members, and they work very hard. So I'll take the responsibility for um, things not happening miraculously, but I can tell you that they've been done in good faith, 
and that we've tried and we continue to try. So, you know, when the budget is tight, that's when people's character comes out. And that's when we have to roll up our sleeves and do what we need to do. So I, I don't think it's going to be productive to go forward and throw stones at people. And that's not the tone I think that this school committee in the last year or so has taken. So I don't want to go back to the days of the past. But we'll do what we need to do. And any help that the mayor can give, I will graciously accept. And we appreciate everything you're doing with respect to the uh, police officers. And um, their presence today was great. How long they can do it, we don't know. But um, we will continue to work hard on this issue. Um, the safety of our kids is paramount to all of us. And um, you know, I don't want to play games with the safety of our students. The subcommittee, the transportation subcommittee, met several times over the course of the summer, early spring, summer. And even though it was a, a subcommittee, which is three members, most of the committee members were at attendance for all of those meetings because of the importance of safe transportation for all of our students. We painstakingly went through all of this and we looked at every single, cr Mike was um, diligent in looking at and reviewing every single crossing uh, that we had and and that's a moving target every year because our students move we may have kids that need that crossing station one year but don't need it the next so we went through this process of looking at every single crossing station and also making a very very tough decision of how we can transport the greatest number of students the safest way so Mike how many by, it, by being able to look at every single crossing station that we had and give up some of those crossing stations how many more buses were we able to add and how how much were we able to maintain the current walk zone and what would have happened if we didn't do that? Uh, we were able to save six buses um, and we were able that w allowed us not to change the walkout for the high school and the middle school. Um, and what would that have changed to? Uh, I think two and a half miles for high school and two miles for middle school students. So just try to imagine your, your children, sixth grade, through high school walking two to two and a half miles every day during January, February, during the worst of the weather, trying to get to school in those conditions. So that's what we went through and that's what we, those are the decisions we made. Now, do you know how we did at some of those spots that we did, did you get any reports back on any issues? Yeah, there was we a, need to revisit and maybe change some of those those uh, spots that we maybe didn't have a crossing guard that we need, or maybe a crossing guard station that we don't need any longer. Yeah, there was one. Uh, actually, there was one at the Baker mm -hmm. that um, they would like back, and that was uh, the entrance to the parking lot. Um, there was one more in front of the Huntington School. Um, we I almost probably went from usually two people at the Huntington down to one in the yeah. certain spots. There's a spot that needs another one out in the front near Market Street. Um, there was a spot inside the, um, right on in the beginning of the Hancock School um, that helped with lining up the parents and the cars when they pull in because they start pulling in easy uh, early actually. Mm -hmm. So that was another spot and then there was a, um, a spot over uh, on the north side and I think it serves the Angelo School that did not have a lot of action today. Um, I hate to <laughs> I'm reluctant to remove any spots until kindergarten starts mm -hmm. on the 15th because um, we don't know how many more people will be walking their kids um, when the kindergarten start. You know, the, about 1,200 or usually 1,500 extra mm -hmm. kids. So I wouldn't take any spot, remove any spots, even though they didn't have a lot of foot traffic. You know, we'll, we'll keep evaluating it. But I did get reports from from the principals and, and a couple of offices that work for Lieutenant Mills that a few spots that they felt that maybe um, we could bring them back. Uh, so I had three spots, uh, one at the Huntington, one at the Hancock, and um, what was the other one I just mentioned? The Baker. The, baker. The, begin the entrance to the Baker. So those were the three that stood out today. So again, we'll continue to monitor it. Um, I, you know, I, I really can't add any spots um, until 
we move forward and see where we are with with the money because again for every spot we add it's seven thousand two hundred dollars and I, I just you know I can't overspend I don't we don't have obviously have that so again we'll we'll wait and see where we go uh, and and from here but um, I will not remove any spots obviously until we we wait till kindergarten starts but I know of three right now that we need to keep an eye on and the subcommittee as well as the full committee will continue to to work diligently on this issue and we'll have several meetings going forward to make sure that we do have proper coverage and it's well thought out it's not an emotional decision but it's a, a, a responsible decision that we're going to make exactly and, and again I would welcome um, a committee meeting when um, if anything happens where we can add spots back because the work of the of the committee because from each one of your wards you know your schools right. and, and yeah. in most cases better than I do and because your, your kids went to those schools so you know the hot spots um, and so I welcome that because you know we did that together because yeah, you know even though we went and we looked at every spot um, uh, you're the ones that know the neighborhoods best and were able to help us so we'll do this we'll the way we cut it hopefully we can do it this to add them back as well we we'll do it the same kind so you know the same way to work on this and communication will be key going forward exactly work yep. in progress Mike yes Good job Doc. thank you thank you I think everyone certainly appreciates the great work that the committee did over the summer and the expansion of the buses. Um, I think the issue remaining in front of us though is I just don't see how we eliminate almost 50 school crossing guards and say that we've maintained the same level of safety that was there last year. And, uh, and I understand that there's no additional money in the budget and that's why I think it's critical that if we could get an agreement with the custodians union that allowed us to with the existing budget get more crossing guards back out in the post that to me is the most reasonable solution right now and I think in brief conversations tonight there's a willingness on both sides to try to sit down and hammer something out and I think the sentiments I expressed is that this is now urgent you know over the summer it's one thing we have negotiations going on for months but the fact of the matter is today you know we had a reduction of almost 50 school crossing guides out of 119 and there's no way that 72 is as safe as 119 was and I I think I a couple of the ones that Mike mentions were, were ones that I saw today and I also saw a couple of other schools the unknown school this afternoon there was one school crossing guard out on Belmont Street for the entire unknown school and it's a heavy traffic place there was cars everywhere we pulled a cruiser from another location we had to use two cruisers and two police officers officers to get the people out of that school today. So I mean, I, I get it. I know there was only a certain amount of money and there was a lot of work done to preserve the buses, but the fact of the matter is today we do have 8,000 students a day walking to school and we've got to get them back and forth to school safely. And uh, I don't think it's a matter of any finger pointing. I think it's a matter of us realizing that this is an emergency and hopefully with the spirit of cooperation we can work out a new arrangement with the custodians union that would allow us to fill existing positions out of the existing budget. I think that's the goal I'm trying to put forward and I appreciate uh, both the school committee and the union indicating a willingness to to get together sooner than the plan, the next scheduled meeting because every day it poses a threat to the safety of the kids. You know, we're burying a three-year-old on Saturday morning that was hit and killed by a car Friday night. This is a very real threat. Uh, there's a lot of cars and a lot of kids, and I, I, I don't want to. I don't want us to not be doing everything we possibly can to make it as safe as we possibly can. And I think we all agree on that, Mr. Henningsen. Mr. Thomas, are we doing any outreach to the community in terms of uh, safety uh, in, in walking uh, the students and, and how are we going to communicate, you know, um, like the mayor indicated, we, we just had a, a three-year-old hit and killed. Um, it wasn't a school-related incident. Uh, the 12-year-old the who was hit and killed wasn't a school-related incident. But these show that, that we do have traffic issues in the city. And I think it's incumbent on us to educate not only the drivers, you know, from a police presence, but also educate the students in, in how to use a crosswalk, et cetera, and, and you know, how to, how to 
watch out for traffic. I, 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 I personally witnessed it the other day, you know, in, in shock and awe, uh, in a personal situation, watching 10 to 12 youths literally drive their bicycles down the middle of the street, almost taunting people to, to hit them. And, and it's scary because, you know, we're in a situation where we're trying to balance the, the weight of making sure we have enough buses so we don't have kids walking, but then we have the situation of kids walking and lots, you know, less crossing guards. And um, on that also, I would e echo the sentiments of, of uh, Vice Chair Minichello that, you know, I think we all take the seriousness of, of the safety of our students, you know, uh, utmost importance. Um, I know attending the services of the 12-year-old uh, boy who, who passed away, it was just absolutely devastating. And I can only imagine as a parent I, I couldn't imagine having to go through that. And, you know, anything we can do, uh, I'd certainly welcome the mayor's, you know, input. And, and uh, I'm certainly willing to work with Mr. Minicello on that committee to um, find any time possible that, that we can meet to get this, you know, solution taken care of. Um, I'll uh, jump in with um, the, um, and it's, you know, last year we opened the new sidewalks to the Brookfield. Um, that was a grant from the Safe Routes to School program run by the Department of um, Transportation um, from the state. Uh, who runs that program? Her first name is Nitzer, I think. I, I can't, I, her last name escapes me. Um, but she's working with all our elementary school principals, and uh, they provide uh, lessons and curriculum for Safe Routes to School. Um, and I know Liz will uh, jump in and talk about what the health teachers are doing this year, what they do every year, but they have moved it up now into the start of the year with um, the right. children. Right, so student safety um, in walking um, and community safety is something that we typically do a little bit later on in the year, but Mary Ellen Corrine has already um, been in touch with the health and wellness teachers to say that they want that to be covered first um, and, and, and repeated you know, throughout the year. The other thing is that Mary Ellen has reached out to Jane Froley, our parent engagement specialist and they're already talking about um, some parent events in the evening just to make sure that there's awareness around these issues and that parents are also supporting you know students and educating them um, about about their own safety in the community and in walking to school you heard me talk about our parent advocacy centers. Um, again, we have uh, designated some space at the Adult Learning Center, the Payne School. Um, Jose Pinheiro, in uh, one of his grants, has come up with some money for three parent advocates. And those parent advocates will be uh, speaking Haitian Creole, um, our Spanish. Uh, we have a, a larger uh, Spanish population located at the George School, uh, one of our schools, and also Cape Verdean. And those parents will be hired to advocate Advocate with other parents to actually again have parents getting other parents involved you know understanding you know some of the concerns that we have so we work together as partners with them and rather than just saying that we're hoping to make sure that this happens in our district also we're going to be including our special education parents as part of this advocacy center so it's another avenue to get out there and start to have a dialogue but more importantly than that I think uh, again as part of our strategic plan you will remember one of of the focus groups is to engage the community and this is one of those things that we can't solve alone we'll work very closely I've spoken to Maya Carpenter but it will be when I'm out there in listening tours we were actually sitting you know brainstorming and I'm sure many of you remember years ago and and you might have been I think it was called a block mom and you actually had something in your window that told a child a safe place that they could go well you know on another tone we, we start to talk to making sure the parents are educated making sure they're supported kids as they're working, making sure that the culture of our drivers in the city start to change, whether it's also with our young people that are going through not just driver education classes at Brockton High School, but bringing other driver education programs and, programs and to start to talk about those kinds of, of signs. Um, I know we have city resource officers that have also, school resource officers, that have also talked uh, to our school administration about coming in and doing, again, some education for our students and hopefully for the community. So again, it, it is something that we're responding to. Uh, I think we were, I can't say we were taken by surprise, but it has certainly been a heartbreak for the schools and for the city and we will respond. Thank you, sir. 
Yes, yeah, Mr. Joy. Yes, I was thinking about uh, communications on this. We've got the cable system here in the high school. We also have the one that's uh, the regular city cable that's uh, we could put programs on there and run them on a continuum basis for youngsters, not just the ones that are in schools, but the three-year-old probably wasn't in our schools per se, but may have been in other schools. It may be tied in some of the other uh, preschools that are around the city. Somehow we could put something together that if you go with the old Sesame Street, the 10, 20, 30, up to maximum 90 second kinds of things that children could watch uh, so that constantly they could be doing something along that line. Possibly with the, uh, the buses, we talked about using not only our own, but the city buses with something on them, uh, whether it be some kind of posters or something. Uh, these are things that a lot of us, when we grew up, those things were happening, but for some reason, it seems to have disappeared. Why, I don't know. We have much better communications today, but we don't seem to utilize them. This is something that we can even have some of the kids are in our communication classes put together, so it's costing us nothing. At the most, maybe some something, whether it be thumb drives or discs or something to send out to the different places that can utilize them. And that would be the basic cost. The rest of it would be just a project for our own youngsters. So I suggest looking into that and one way to keep this going, not just now, but run it continuously during the, the year uh, for, for everybody. And even maybe including adults also because, again, we have lots of people that seem to drive quite differently than some of us did when we were younger, although some of us weren't probably that great either, but that's the end of there. But again, just using the maximum we can for communication where, like I said, the cost could be pretty close to zero. That's a great suggestion, Ozzy, and we'll, we'll look to implement that ASAP. Yeah, I'd be happy to help anybody with that. And again, Tom, if you need anybody else to help with you on this as either a small or separate project or overall, be happy to join you folks. Anything else on this one? Sure. Anything else with the deputy superintendents? Uh, no? Was that set? Thank you. So, budget Thank you. Yeah. Um, at, at this point here, uh, while we continue to monitor grants, um, I hope to have good news uh, hopefully within the next month or so. Uh, there are, we are starting to see some movement and I will con continue to keep you updated. Uh, also with our Grants and Development Office where we're planning to go forward with our campaign this year to start to engage you know, businesses in, as we said, you know, adopting our schools, taking part in a more active role. It was interesting when it came to doing outreach to support our new logo uh, with our vision, our mission statement, etc. Um, nobody turned us away. People are very, very willing to help and, and see it as a worthwhile cause to support our schools. So I will keep you updated uh, as we go forward. And the only other thing that I'd like to mention, um, when we talk about coming back to school, I mentioned the teachers, we mentioned the students. I do want you to know that a week or so ago, our principals are back, you know, ahead of obviously the teachers coming back. And there was a professional development for our principals in the way of the new discipline law that has come in, Chapter uh, 222. We will be giving you updates. We are training our staff. Um, it is a, a different uh, mindset and a process about making sure the kids have opportunities opportunities uh, to, to stay in school with, with different kinds of interventions, uh, looking at decreasing the number of suspensions in the schools. We will actively work on that. We will communicate to our parents uh, some of those changes. Uh, the other thing that we did for our administrators was a crisis management team update. Again, something that was started in the district many years ago, but talking about putting together a team, making sure they had updated documents. And so there was training going around, all around for, for everybody. That's it. Okay. All right. So at uh, this time, uh, we'll entertain uh, any items to refer to subcommittees. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pat. One thing, uh, just a request from the superintendent, possibly in Friday's packet. Can we get an update on all of the positions that are still um, unfilled? Yes. For each of our um, our primarily our non-certified groups. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I, I'd, I'd like to see that myself. <laughs> um, 
So items to refer to subcommittee. I know that I know the superintendent has several requests, so I'll allow you to go. I do. The first one would be um, our facility subcommittee. Um, in light of the fact, again, at, at this point here, uh, we, we know about our facility master plan. We're waiting. Hopefully during this year we'll be able to move forward on that. But in light of the fact that we talked about increasing enrollment, we really need to be looking at something for next year, this year with our growing elementary uh, enrollment. So I'd like to bring that committee together uh, to talk about uh, putting together a task force to start to have dialogue. It would not only uh I'd like to talk to the school committee, but I would like to include our administrators, uh, some of our elementary principals, our middle school principals. When we go into a facility master plan, it is much more a community organization working with a facility master plan, but we need to have that conversation sooner than later. Okay. okay. So facilities. Yep. As part of that, we can incorporate an update on where we stand with our transportation issues as well. So we can start to get those um, meetings scheduled within the next two weeks, hopefully. So a transportation subcommittee? Yeah, and we can add to the agenda. You know, it's the same subcommittee, right. although I do expect that most of the committee members will want to be present anyway, but we can incorporate those two agenda items into the same meeting. The other two that I'd like to talk about because, uh, again, looking back at last year, it is amazing the work that you got done as a school committee with, with many subcommittees and, and many accomplishments. Um, and I do want you to know when I spoke to the teachers yesterday, and I did use these words, I told them you were awesome in the work that you actually were able to accomplish last year as a group of elected officials, and I thank you. Um, that being said, we had started our policy subcommittee. There are a number of policies. I know we started back in April. We had a lot on our plate at that point. Um, so we, we'd like to um, set up some regular meetings to start to look at our policies. And the other subcommittee is a finance subcommittee. And I would like to update you um, with some of the uh, contracts with uh, principals. One of the things you shared with me in the beginning coming on as superintendent is to take a look at the principal's contract. I'm very pleased going forward with putting some metrics in place, looking at some accountability, because we are a district that has to look at accountability measures. You know, we're looking at a number of other factors for our uh, multiple pathways alternative schools. So I want to share with you some of the work that has been done uh, on those contracts and some outstanding uh, contracts. I'm trying to get templates in place and uh, hopefully it makes sense. So I'd like to put together a finance subcommittee to discuss to discuss the contracts. So Tom, that's four subcommittees here. Yeah. Coordinate getting those all scheduled. Oh, curriculum. Okay. And the last one I did forget was the curriculum subcommittee. I know we have a presentation that you had wanted for a long time on the health and wellness uh, in the schools. We've put that off again a number of times because of the budget situation last spring. There's five now, Tom. Five seconds. <laughs> Obviously, um, you know, it's amazing how things come in spurts. Um, you know, the overdose situation was crazy. And now it seems like it's being replaced with little kids getting hit by cars. I mean, it's just it's just one bad thing after another. So um, that was basically to try to see where we're at, what we're doing with respect to drug prevention, try to incorporate some realism or real life uh, people coming in, you know, those motivational type of people that talk about their experience and their family's experience and because I, I think those real life situations um, have an impact on young people. You know, it's, you're not looking, you're not reading out of a book, you're not just listening to your instructor. Having these people come in who really have lived it, see it, work with it, that's the kind of stuff that hopefully we're going to hear some of that or more of that is being incorporated into some of our classrooms. So that's what I'm hoping to hear. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, on another note, not a subcommittee, but um, some of you may have looked at your emails today. Um, I spoke, you don't speak to anyone today, you text people, right? So I, I spoke by text to President Bob Sullivan of the City Council, and we're trying to have a joint meeting on the 24th of this month at 6 o'clock at East. Um, I think this time the format's going to be more questions and comments from the audience rather than 
bloviation of elected officials. So um, that um, hopefully that's going to happen. Um, I scheduled that with your chief of staff today, so he knows about that. Um, and um, the last thing that I am going to say tonight is that um, some of my dear friends brought me a birthday cake. So after the meeting, anyone who would like a piece of cake, there's a nice cake from White's over there. So um, come join me. Um, my friends from the Custodians Union, please come down here and join me so we can talk about um, you know, getting together sooner rather than later. So join me for a piece of cake. Um, birthday is this? This really is 49. I'm in the I'm in the final stretch here, you know. It's really it's it's not a lie. It's 49. So next year's the biggie, you know, the big one. So, but I have all my hair and I don't have a pot belly, so I'm doing all right. So so on that note, I'm I'm done for the evening. Yeah. No, 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 I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have an extra piece of cake, Bill. Almost. He's almost there. That's it for me. Are we done chatting each other? Yeah. All right, sure? Okay. All right. How about... Uh, Superintendent under unfinished business, Superintendent strategic plan. Oh, you want uh, that on there or no? Yeah. Um, again, I just want to continue to update you. I, I shared with you this evening. Um, we will start putting together, you had asked again about benchmarks, about timelines, about metrics, about project managers. So we are presently working on that and I will present to you again, um, you know, probably within the next month, our plans uh, as we start to implement the, the strategic plan. Okay, how about new business for anyone? Mr. Henningsen? Uh, yeah, uh, just a couple things. Um, first, I would uh, ask if possibly we could schedule, well, November 4th, November, yeah, November 4th is a new election. Uh, we'll be having a, a, a state rep, a freshman state rep elected. Um, if we might be able to set up a meeting with our, our state reps sooner than later, you know, to, to go through one of those events that we had last May, it would be really nice to, maybe we could do something at night or whatever to get as many people involved as possible. Mr. Henningson, we did have that conversation. I'm trying to remember the date, the 18th? That was before the city council. Yeah. So one of the things they did remind me of, and I think that affects everybody, is many of them work during the day. So we had talked about just that, having uh, a dinner. So two things uh, I was hoping to meet with um, city council president Bob Sullivan to talk about issues the city council would like to hear as we go forward during the year and have opportunities to go in and have conversations about priorities that they would like to hear from the school department. We did talk about a dinner. We'll do that, you're right, um, last May. I mean, you know, things were really done. We need to get our legislative, as you mentioned. We would certainly have a, a newbie coming on board uh, that's exciting for us. Um, so we will get a dinner scheduled, and we are trying to get a tour of um, a number of our facilities. It would be great for you to see some of the good work that's done, but what I really want you to see is some of the work that does need to be done in the district. So that we were looking to do on a Saturday. We were hoping early Saturday morning, meet at the central office, and um, I've actually talked to uh, Ray Ledoux from BAT, and we're hoping to maybe put together something so um, we can get a count of how many people would like to join us on, on our um, tour. And just two other quick things. I just wanted to personally thank the uh, Helping to United crew and Stonehill students. Uh, came out on the 25th of August and they, they canvassed uh, the city of Brockton cleaning up a lot of parts of the city, but specifically the Raymond School got a really great cleanup. They worked hard. I went by there that night and it was just amazed at the difference when I left for work compared to when I came back. And I, I just wanted to give them, you know, a, a, a gratitude, uh, you know, thanks of gratitude. And I also wanted to thank the Old Colony YMCA and Mark D'Agostino from D'Agostino Insurance. Um, he put on a, I think it's called Paint the Town event, uh, they called it, and they went to the Huntington School and they cleaned up the playground and painted lines and, and uh, did a great job. Um, so I just wanted to thank them as well. Yeah, I also, I'm sorry, the, the Stonehill students also did some great work at the Tukas Playground also. Yeah. 
And I saw young people throughout the city. Uh, I'm not sure if these were summer workers because they were out there also in the neighborhoods, you know, cleaning up the neighborhoods. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, it does look nice. This is Joyce. I, I never bring anything, so this is kind of a treat for me. I had the honor of um, attending the dedication of the Davis Library to a true volunteer, Mary Ann Burke. And it was a very bittersweet moment because we all miss her terribly, but it was really great to honor a true volunteer, a parent that came into the system wanting to instill importance of education to her own son and in turn just benefited thousands of, of children's lives in the in the meantime. And uh, so it's a beautiful it's a beautiful dedication. Um, it's beautiful red lettering on the white uh, soffit when you walk into the library you cannot miss it and we're really excited about it providing a teaching opportunity of what volunteerism is really about and how you, know, you can really give back to your community so it was really nice to attend Bob Buckley was there from the mayor's office and that was really great and he said some wonderful um, things about Miriam he knew Miriam because he was a teacher there so it was very nice and uh, Billy and his father Miles were there and both of Miriam's sisters were there so it was really a beautiful event and I have to um, give um, give a, a lot of credit to the Davis PTA, the, the group of volunteers there, the women there, and the men there. They really put together a wonderful uh, benefit, and they um, they really advocated for, for this naming. So it was really nice, and it's nice to see it. So if you get a chance to see it, it's really nice there. They did a top-notch job. I did get there at 620 yesterday, so I <laughs> the goodies were walking out the door, but, but it did look beautiful. It did look beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah. and Mary Ann, again, I couldn't agree more. She served on the Community School Advisory Board mm -hmm. uh, as a parent representative, uh, was always involved in uh, fundraisers on Monte Carlo nights, um, you know, always willing to give of her time, and, and I couldn't agree more with you. Thanks. Anyone else with new business? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Uh, motion's been made and properly seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? This meeting is adjourned.